Hi folks, <coughs> so I'm going to try to go back to basics, beginnings with oil painting or as I perceive it, as I have done it for many years <coughs> uh, supports oil painting will stick to most things uh, you can use canvas, plywood that's laminate, lamina, hardwood, MDF, any surface, provided you give it a, a primer. I paint a lot of watercolour paper. This is it's primed. I also like painting on unprimed paper. Uh, but there's a bit of controversy about uh, whether it will last because of the acid in the paint and the and, the, and cheaper papers being wood pulp or. 30% wood pulp so best to uh, stick to something that is going to to be durable an MDF which I paint a lot on is very uh, very durable unless you wet it it's very strong but the heavier varieties of it above five meters five millimeters of thick and above tends to be rather heavy to hang on the wall Especially if you go up to about 30 by 24 inches, you need a really good wall and a strong pin or drill holes in your wall for it. So I tend to use the two or two and three millimeter uh, MDF and cut it down to size. Uh, it, uh, as often as not, it doesn't need uh, any rubbing down because the primer whatever you use, whether you use PVA glue or uh, a proper art artist primer, the gesso, which it does tend to lift the surface somewhat, but you'll have to check for that on your, because MDF qualities vary. So there's that. Um, canvas comes ready prepared with an acrylic primer. And you can give it another chest. So you can also add some powder, plaster, plaster uh, Paris plaster, crack filler. That mixes very well with PVA glue and makes a very rough surface. And you can almost model with it, make a surface underneath of lumps and bumps. <coughs> but I prefer to just work it in so that you get a tooth to grip the paint. This has had quite a bit of primer on it some this is burnt umber acrylic mixed with pva glue on top of uh, a pva glue base so that it's impervious to the paint soaking in and leaving dull patches although that could be lifted with a varnish but uh best to start off right uh and it has a smoother feel to it, so it doesn't grip the paint as well, not at the beginning anyway. But you find out these things. Now, I use a basic palette. Here's my basic palette at the moment. Uh, we'll add another colour to it, yellow ochre. There's cadmium red, ultramarine, pones grey, uh, cadmium yellow pale, and the yellow ochre. That's uh, two, four, five colours, plus white. I don't count class white as a colour. Black is a colour. Or oh, black and paint's grey. You can overuse these things, but my suggestion would be to use a palette of those colours to start with. And then you get used to mixing all your tints with just a few colours. Keeps it simple. The more colours you have in your palette, the more difficulty the, the uh, difficulty arises because you're trying to use too many colours because you can't make the mix with this in the simple way of, of just starting with two or three. You're tempted to use them, and you've got to be a, a real bit of an expert to use a load of colours. It's like most colours. I use five or six in a painting or acrylic and I stick to them. Occasionally I 
I put I add something like viridian or sap green or vermilion or light red and sort of burnt sienna. I love burnt sienna. I haven't put it on the palette because I don't. Yeah, I'll put it on the palette. Why not? So we have half a dozen colours. I buy student quality, Winsome mostly, Dale Rowley. They're very good, they're, but the Winsome and Newsom, uh, Burnt Sienna is, is like a dark red, superb colour. But if you're rich and you don't mind wasting uh, colour, <laughs> get, get the best you can afford. So many brushes, just so I use uh, reasonable quality brushes and cheapo brushes. They do different things. But don't think by throwing more colour at the painting, like my last one is a good example of it, that you're going to get out of trouble. You won't. You'll just be digging yourself into a bigger hole because you've made it too complicated. So keep it simple, stupid is my motto. So for this one, I'm going to use, uh, oh, about cleaning. I use uh, and a medium. I'm using either walnut oil, which is cheap from supermarket and clear, or and good quality, to, um, good quality linseed oil. This is what I'm using at present, and I like it. Pure Cam linseed oil. It's a very good one. I shall buy some more of that shortly because I'm getting a bit low on it. Uh, to, you can use turps. I, I, I don't use turps because, or paraffin, which is a brilliant brush cleaner. Paraffin keeps your bristles, not your nylon bristles, but your hog bristles, lovely and soft because it is an oil. But when you're cleaning your brush in a piece of paraffin, or kerosene, soaked rag, it's a killer. You're holding the you're holding the your towel underneath and cleaning away and the and the your bit of toweling is getting more and more soaked with the, the paraffin that you do yourself damage. So I, I tend to use just the linseed oil or the walnut oil and a bit of dryer, the artisan fast drying medium. That all helps it to dry faster. Uh, and cleaning, cleaning up, I use dishwasher liquid. No, not dishwasher, sorry. Washing up liquid, fairy in this country, fairy, good quality. I don't want a, a, a supermarket's brand because it tends to be dilute. You want the real thing. That's fairy liquid or equivalent in a supermarket. And that will clean your brushes. The oil will submit and put its hands up. It just, just soaks it, just lifts it out in a lot of water, of course, hot water, warm water, and it cleans your hands as well. So there we are. That's a cheap brush, uh, Interpress bristle. bristle. I bought bought a uh, pack of these, different sizes, for eight pounds, and they're lovely for. They're not good for fine work, but they're good for stippling and creating an illusion of detail. Most important. Unless you want to paint photographically, then, you are, then there are other artists that teach that. I teach rough and ready, impressionist type painting. And I sell more of those than the watercolours. And this is a seven and a half inches by 11 inches. The outside edge anyway. It's half, half a sheet. Ideal for demonstrating and ideal for posting. I'm going to sell them on Etsy. So, okay, let's put it going for a sky. Oh, well, skies, just have a look up. Uh, it's a blue sky, and you want to paint a blue sky? I prefer a, a, a complicated sky in that, that you've got a bit of blue, you've got a bit of everything. So just, just go for it. Dip, dip your brush in the, in the oil, a bit of white, and... Uh, Bit of blue, and I just bung it on. This is how I do it. Let fly. 
Don't paint a little bit and try to finish it and then go on to the next bit. Paint all over. And it helps the paint to go a bit tacky, especially if you're using alkyd resin. You can buy a range of paints that are acrylic based, uh, alkyd based, like it has a dryer in it, alkyd resin, which is uh, a lovely way to paint, but they're more expensive. They are artist quality. I just use the t some titanium white. Griffin, alkyd, that's the one. Been using it on and off for years, and I mix it with uh, the ordinary student grade. Uh, a bit of best of both worlds there. Yeah. I'm going to do a metal because they seem to be sim simplest things to, to do, but it's quite difficult to paint a, a good meadow. Yeah, let's add a bit of colour in there. Just going down, I'm going to paint or superimpose my landscape over the sky. Clean the brush, go in for a bit, whoop, bit, bit, a bit darker. No, just, just bang away. Because it's oh, it'll stay open much longer than uh, the acrylic. I'm not a lover of acrylic. I know people ask me to do it, but I prefer oil painting. Now we're going to have a little bit darker there, so we can mix a bit of a bit of the cadmium red with it, with the blue, and you can get a sort of a colour. You can use Payne's grey which is even better. Look, great, great fun. Just, just, in, just let fly and enjoy yourself. You'll develop your style as you go along. You're not born with a style. Nor are most of us born with any talent. It's something that we learn to do after years of practice. And so loads of people better than I am. But I just do what I do. Get some, get some nice white clouds in there. You'll find that if you use uh, Griffin, it will dry as you, after about 15 minutes, it'll start to go a bit tacky, which is lovely. Well, we've got a sky coming now. And you can, by your brush strokes, you can get a bit of movement in the sky. Touch of red. Why not? It's just warming up a bit more. With this, the world's your oyster. Just, just have fun. Now you could use a bit of impasto. Which is lovely using impasto like that, just, just bunging it on and now we don't want to do too many layers. They look a bit, a bit mannered. But 
and then you can get your big strokes in. So that's a sort of a, quite a lively sky there, isn't it? Even do us do a uh, a uh, sorry, I sometimes forget what I'm saying. A, a, a coastal scene. But take your clouds off off screen because it looks as if you're trying to fit it in fit them in I oh, will can leave that well we'll let that go for a moment now, shall we do a meadow or shall we do rocks? I think rocks are more dramatic, aren't they? So, we'll do rocks instead. And um, So, do you paint your rocks first or do you paint them over the... What you've got? So, what we'll do, we'll do a bit of a yellow ochre and ultramarine. A bit of white. A bit more blue. will give you a good sea colour. Uh, and then blend it very gently. Take the sky into the sea. I'll oh, be going uphill there a bit. And now we just get some, some of that colour and just lighten. Okay, another two. Now, I use the same brush, just give it a good pull through the toweling. You get most of the paint off of the brush without dipping it into any white spirit or brush cleaner. I've got a, a chest problem, COPT, and I have to be very careful what I use now. So I'm giving you some good advice. There's stuff like, I, I did somebody told me to use Zestic because it was odour free, it wasn't, and it was highly toxic, had a big cross on the back, back of it, deadly. Uh, let's have more blue on there, on that to horizon. Right, there's ochre. Well, all the house UK chaos. I hope you're going to get your barbies out if you've got a big enough garden to do it. All right, let's uh, put in uh, some rocks. Now, uh, rocks, grey rocks, ochre rocks, a bit of a bit of this and the other.
Try to keep things soft. And we'll go to another one. A good rock painter is a, one of my colleagues on uh, Facebook, she's not on YouTube, is Jackie Gardner. She's a Scottish artist, superb, but she does, can go very abstract. It's not hard like to be, you know, not, not entirely abstract, I leave that to the abstract painters, but But I tend to go between the two. Now, we've got, you can reflect some of the white or light clouds on the tops of the of the uh, wave wavy things. So here we go, waves. Ha ha. Now uh, the glaze are going to come in very handy here. Look, just get your shadow in the wave. Then you can Put some of that on there. I mean, you've got some breaking waves here and there, or crests that catch the light. Oh, it's got a light grey under there. Hardly shows. Okay. Right, now we want some some uh, darker grey colour because it's in shadow. Put a bit of light on on those uh, rocks. Right now, we 
have some fun with the uh, with the white the white side. Oh, I'm guessing this. I'm not copying anything. All right, now we get some greys in. Reflecting the sky. Going in towards the shore, you can add a bit of ochre. Fascinating here, I've got to go and cut the grass off this. Here's a bigger. Bit of towel there. Well, I guess some darker colour in there. Just putting in bit of the shadow that you get underneath the breaking surf. Right, that's just darker. Let's make it more dramatic with that Payne's Grey. And we can uh, drag a little bit of that uh, colour. I hope uh, I 
hope that makes sense. Uh, I really do like doing these sort of scenes. But there's much more dark in, in, in this than I'm painting. Think something that's not there's less white than you think. There's a lot of the sky being reflected in in these this incoming tide or whatever you want to call it. Oh, just a bit of wave coming over the rocks. Okay, well, that's a demo. I'm going to let it go. I'm not going to put a seat on it. I'll put it in a mount, though. Or, yeah, in a mount. And we'll have a look at it. And I'll clear up. And I'll carry on with doing things that I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, no, I don't want that one. Got a bigger one on that. Someone like. Well, there we are. We've got a very simple. I'm going to see if I can brighten this up a bit. That's better. That's a more realistic colour. Okay. Quite pleased with it. I hope the sound's okay. I've, I've, there's so many, many adjustments you can make on these Logitech webcams. But I, I haven't got a clue. I, I really need to, somebody to show me how to do it. And I don't know anybody who's got one. Apart from Gary Crosby, who paints water, wonderful watercolours on YouTube. Gary Crosby. My old colleagues. You make a lot of acquaintances and colleagues on YouTube. We share. Not all of us, eh? Right, okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something from that. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.